Hey guys, I'm Soren. And I'm Mary. And here's what's going on in world news this week. Waking up blind would normally be terrifying, but Jewel Shooping says she's felt she should be blind from the age of six. She has been fluent in Braille since she was 20, and now has decided to make herself blind. Shooping suffers from body integrated identity disorder, a disorder where people believe they should have been born disabled. At 21, she found a psychotherapist who would work with her to lose her sight. They have worked for years by pouring drain fluid into her eyes until she eventually damaged them so much she had to have them removed. Shooping said she is finally happy to be the way she should have been since birth. I really hope she plans on paying the expenses that come with being blind out of her pocket, and that includes the psychology bill that she clearly needs. This past Monday, Donald Trump sent his presidential opponent, Marco Rubio, a Trump-style care package. The package included Trump Ice Natural Spring Water, bottles that have Trump's face on them, and Make America Great Again towels and bumper stickers. A note with the package said, Since you're always sweating, we thought you could use some water. If you don't know who Marco Rubio is, it's because he's most famous for a 5-bit clip on YouTube as that guy who places water 50 yards away from wherever he's giving his speech, despite the fact that he apparently drinks as much as a hippo. And if you don't know what a hippo is, then your world is a sad, sad place. The real question is, what's in Trump Ice Natural Spring Water? My guess is carrots infused with tiger eyes to give you that healthy orange glow. Fast food chains McDonald's and Burger King have been making some major changes recently. As if McDonald's hasn't already contributed to the obesity issue in America, as of Tuesday, they started selling breakfast items all day long in over 14,000 U.S. locations. The reason for this change is probably so customers can stop coming in minutes after 10.30 demanding for Egg McMuffins. Though customers should be loving it, this new change, they'll probably still find a reason to throw tantrums at their employees because the menu is limited at each location. Burger King released a new item on their menu, the Halloween themed burger. Don't worry, the same garbage ingredients are still inside the bun. However, the bun is black with A1 steak sauce baked into the crust. As unappealing as that sounds, people have actually tried it. And according to consumers, it turned their poop a nasty shade of green. People are not only concerned, but they're outraged and confused as multiple tweets have been submitted to Burger King demanding to know why they're green. Come on, people. What do you expect out of a food that costs 99 cents to make? The state of South Carolina has been hit by massive flooding due to dam walls bursting. But while people in their homes are taking considerable damage, a report recently showed that fire ants are pulling through. So don't worry, guys. Apparently, fire ants can float by forming an ant-based raft. However, these rafts are less of a community coming together to weather a storm and more of a survival of the fittest challenge, as the report states that the ants at the very edges of the raft are probably not there by choice. See, even insects typically view it as an example of a working community know when to throw each other to the fishes. Anyway, it looks like South Carolina will have something extra special to look forward to when the flood stops. There is apparently a simple way to destroy these rafts, but why would we tell you that? <laughs> California has recently been added to the group of five states who have made it legal to commit physician-assisted suicide. Governor Jerry Brown signed the controversial bill on Monday. He says, in the end, I was left to reflect on what I would have done in the face of my own death. Most people seem to be bored with the signing of the bill, but there are still some people, like Jesuit priest James Martin, who do not support the bill, because they believe that God put us on the earth for a reason, and that he will take us when he is ready to take us. The law... The, the law was put in place so people who were put in a life or death situation would be allowed to choose death if they're ready to die. Something that's become rather popular in China lately is glass structures and bridges. On September 20th, a glass-bottomed walkway was opened at Yunai Mountain Geological Park, suspended 3,540 feet above ground. It's barely a month later and the bridge has been temporarily closed after a portion cracked last Monday. This was apparently caused after a tourist dropped a stainless steel mug, but people should count themselves lucky said tourists to drop anything else, like their ceramic backpack or that pocket-sized anvil they were carrying. People panicked, but the cracks were shallow and no one was hurt. Still, this story brings to light the questionably sane idea of building a mountainside bridge made out of glass, which is not only breakable by virtually everything, but a real pain to keep clean, 
I mean, seriously, any minute now, you're going to have those crows from the Windex commercial come down and take tourists off. For Good Eat Harmony, if you're on the prowl for a nice hot MILF, look no further than your local Chuck E. Cheese. It's all the rage these days, now that they've added beer and wine to their party menu. In addition, they're also experimenting with gluten-free pizza, thin crust pizza, coffee, lattes, and cappuccinos. Nothing screams mom of the year like getting drunk before driving a van full of kids. Where a kid can be a kid, more like where a mom can sulk in her own misery and regret. Just a week after the massacre at an Oregon school, presidential candidate Jeb Bush made an interesting comment during a discussion about gun rights and gun violence. Look, stuff happens. There's always a crisis, and the impulse is always to do something, and it's not always the right thing to do. Now, in response to the heat he's been receiving since the comment, Judge Bush stated that the comment was not made in response to the Oregon gun shooting, but to how the country should respond to gun tragedies. Well, to the best of my knowledge, this qualifies as a gun tragedy. And even if Jeb Bush spoke without thinking at the time, which is something you really can't afford to do, by the way, when you're already being questioned on past quotes made this year, sensitive topics like these need to include a certain degree of, well, sensitivity. Also, nobody wants a president whose response to crises is, stuff happens. What was that? A zombified Godzilla has attacked the city? It's eating Lady Liberty's head? Well, stuff happens. What are you going to do? For those having a bad day, here's a story that will warm your heart. Justin Lansford, who is an Army veteran, married his girlfriend, Carol Balms, last week in Largo, Florida. But his best man wasn't just any best man. It was Gabe, the golden retriever who served as Lansford therapy dog after the return home from Afghanistan. Lansford lost his left leg in an IED explosion back in 2012, and ever since then, he has been paired with Gabe. Gabe graduated from the Warrior K-9 Connection, which is a facility that trains dogs to help veterans improve their symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. With Gabe's help, Justin proposed to Carol, and Gabe also served as a ring bearer at the wedding. All I have to say about that is my best man might not be able to help with my PTSD, but he sure will help prevent me from having it when he stops me from bringing back a four from the bar. The fiery pit of expensive nutrition, known as Whole Foods, is in another kerfuffle after customers discovered that the company was relying partially on a prison labor program for some of its items. The company plans to discontinue this practice, and a spokesperson stated that they felt the program was a way to help people get back on their feet and eventually become contributing members of society. While that may be true, the prisoners in question are literally paid pennies by the hour, so even when they do leave prison, it's doubtful that these people would have enough money from Whole Foods to buy even the, a single farm-grown, toxin-free, gilded with water from the fountain of youth grain of whole rice from the place they worked for. That's all for World News. Now here's what's happening in Hollywood. Hey guys, this is Classic. I'm Vicky. I'm Cassie. And I'm Maddie. And here's what's going on in Hollywood this week. Once again, Kanye West proves he's an idiot. In a recent interview with Show Studio, Kanye West speaks out about how he thinks his fashion line was discriminated against because he isn't gay. During the interview, he says, it's funny how the culture of different art forms is so different. I got discriminated against in fashion for not being gay. We're in music, you get discriminated against if you are gay. As if that has to do with anything to do with it, there are plenty of fashion designers who are heterosexual and make a killing in the fashion industry. Kanye, I'm going to let you finish, but you are not a god, and I think you should stick to something you're actually good at, producing mediocre music. So um, what do you guys think? Do you think he's really being discriminated against, or is he all in his head? No, it is not being discriminated against. He's just an idiot. He thinks he's a god. His fashion line was terrible. Did anyone see it? No, and I don't have any desire yeah. to, because I don't think that Kanye West should be a fashion designer. Have you seen his new so shoes? Yeezys? Yeezys? No. I heard they're like a thousand dollars. Am I gonna pay a thousand dollars for a crappy shoe? I actually knew shoes? a guy that bought a pair. Why? Show. Why would you waste your money on that? Yeah. I think they're fucking horrible. Everyone Honestly, loves did you Kanye. see? Did you see like the shirts that he like? First off, they were like dresses. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like that's just not like a classy look to me. Like I, I don't think, know. Like clean yourself up. I think he's trying to do too much different. Yeah. That it's just looking homeless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> you trying to be different, you're trying way too hard. It, exactly. It, and like you having Kim like dresses, everything, yeah. all the Kardashians are, which makes me even more angry that 
he has a fashion I'm line. I'm surprised mm -hmm. Kim's still with him at this point. Yeah, yeah. right? I'd Terrible be walking fashion. out. I'd be like, uh-uh. <laughs> well, I cannot be seen with Jesse you. Put on. <laughs> right. For real. Man, people really adore him. For some reason, his fans are loyal. Absolutely. I've, I've met some I, just, hard fans. I couldn't. I could not deal with me. that. Like, honestly, did anyone see Justin? Okay, not to change the subject, but did anyone see Justin Bieber? He used to dress like all Kanye, and then finally, Calvin Klein took over, and he looks so nice. I'm just like, oh, you are so cute. Like, where yeah. have you been all my life? <laughs> That's He's just finally wearing clothes I fit in. Like, it looks nice. Bendy Irwin paid tribute to her father, Steve Irwin, Crocodile Hunter, if y'all don't know, uh, this week on Dancing with the Stars by deciding, oh, by dedicating her dance to him. The theme for the celebrities this week was to pick the most pivotal moment in their lives to portray in their dance. Bendy chose to come out about her father's passing because she said she had never dwelled on it. She also said that she always feel, still feels like he's going to come home. Uh, they danced to the song Every Step You Take, and the emotional dance was choreographed by her partner, Derek Hill. And it was a tearjerker for anyone who watched Erwin pour everything she had into, the, into that dance. The judges gave her two nines in the first 10 of the season, and no doubt everyone's favorite crocodile hunter would have been proud of his daughters this week. So uh, what, did you guys see the dance? What did you all think? I, I did. I did. It. it was absolutely gorgeous. I probably would have cried, oh. honestly. It, I love her because she's so like genuine. Yeah. She's such a genuine girl. She's 17 years old. Like wow. she lost her dad when she was, I think, about six. So like, and like she said, she didn't dwell on it because I don't think she really understood yeah, what happened. And now, like, being able to do that, I think, was great for her. Definitely. So it was really. If you got, you guys should YouTube it because it's really good. Really good. Yeah. Aww. And the first Did 10 you? of the season, like, that's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, so. I love Dancing with the Stars, so obviously that, that's like. That's like pretty like awesome that yeah. she got a ten. Mm -hmm. I think she, I think she really deserved it. <laughs> I think I think she's a front runner to win. Absolutely, like I've watched it like um, this season and every dance she's done, she's just executed like fantastically. Her and Derek are perfect. Their chemistry yeah. is great. So I, I'm really rooting for her. She's 17 years old. Like, is she actually a dancer or did no, she just decide a, to do she's this? A, just like her dad, she's like a wildlife expert oh, nice. and does all that kind of stuff. That so it's really so awesome cool. that she can like be so versatile yeah. and do something that's completely different than what she is like used to doing. Yeah, so. Most sure. people don't know, these celebrities like do stuff on the side just for fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So like dancing. Oh, it's, they like it's not just like dancing like yeah, they're in the studio it's hard yeah. work like yeah so, I cannot do that yeah. physical activity uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> just forget dancing mm -hmm. <laughs> recently the author of Twilight series Stephanie Meyer celebrated Twilight's 10th birthday by giving diehard Twilight fans a little present uh, Stephanie Meyer has written a book called The Twilight Reimagined she swaps the genders of Bella and Edward so now Edward Collins is girl named Edith, and Bella Swan is a boy named Beaufort. Freaking genius. The game, the book, came out on Tuesday and has sold about 150 million copies. And the only way I want to reimagine Twilight is reimagine it so it was never published. So what do you guys think? Are you all going to be reading and picking up this book lately? Hell no. <laughs> Sorry, but no. Can't. I cannot deal with vampires. That's... So silly. I just can't. Sorry well, like, if you're a fan. Well, no. I, I like vampires, <laughs> yeah. but I personally never even read the Twilight series. Oh. Yeah, you so. Wanna, you want to be ashamed for that. It's okay. Uh, I yeah, never I read know. the books. I watched all the movies. Yeah. I was a diehard Twilight fan. But I think this is a terrible idea. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't want to know what it would be like. I think she should. None of that. I don't think in any fan's mind that was that came across. Like, oh, like. We really want to know what it would yeah. be like if it was a girl. Like, no, no. we don't really care. It's just a money like, yeah, thing. Yeah, it's totally a money just thing. just about to say that. And mm -hmm. I think this is going to maybe ruin Twilight for like for sure. I'm, I really like, hope it does. It, needs, it yeah. needs to die. It needs to be yeah, done. Yeah, it definitely needs to be, be done. I mean, what were what was the other thing? Like, team, is Jacob? Team, team Jacob. Jacob and team Edward. Oh, yeah. What was yeah. everyone? I was team Edward. What was, were you? Ah. <sighs> Uh, mm. Honestly, <laughs> right, because like Edward, he had the vampire yeah. thing going, yeah. so that was like really sexy. Like, how could you not? The eyes, mm -hmm. the pale skin, me personally, I'm into that. So, <laughs> I liked it, but then Jacob obviously was hot. So, yeah. it's so like, hot. I don't know. Taylor Lautner is hot. Yeah, the yeah. storyline kind of 
put people <clears throat> toward Edward, I think. Yeah. So I think that's why I wanted Edward and everyone knew they were going to end up together. Yeah, I obviously. Mean, mm -hmm. more I just, Jacob the now, book so. itself, I like started reading it and I was like, no, I like can't. And then I started watching the movie. The first scene with that stupid deer, I just literally cracked up. I was like, this is not yeah. real life. I can't, I, I had to turn off the TV. Rewatching the movies now, terrible. Yeah. They are terrible. It's actually humorous. It's very funny. Yeah, I was watch. cracking up. Because the acting is terrible and it's like back when I was, I don't know, 10 years ago, so I was... It was that long ago? Wait, wait no, when no, the movies we were, come out? No, we were in high school, because my yeah. best friend had the book, and we yeah. thought it was the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge. We were like, you were freaking the Bible? Yeah. Like, yes. I thought it was awesome. I went to movie theaters. I paid that 10 50 for my I did too, and I don't know why. So, I can never uh, do it. What? I was a huge fan. <laughs> huge fan. Well, I'm glad you But this whole in. thing is not something that, as a fan want or think right. is necessary it's you just want to end just, just like how you had it in your mind <laughs> yeah. yeah stop it while while it's still a good thing mm -hmm. definitely there's a new app debuting soon called people or pee pee people i don't know how do you say it but it's being touted as a yelp for people essentially an app that allows you to review people the way you would a restaurant so that guy that never called you back well you can review him or that ex-girlfriend that cheated on you, well, you can leave a review of that cheating skank hoe so everyone knows to steer clear. Personally, I love the idea, but my preferred method of snack talking is still Facebook and Twitter. So what do you guys think of this new app? This terrifies me. I love it. Terrifies me. I, I kind of <laughs> like it. I'm not going to lie. I kind of like it. Honestly, there's already an app like that. I think it's called Lulu. L Has anyone heard of that? No. Oh Lulu. I think, I think it is Lulu, right? You're all in Lulu. No, <laughs> I, I think that's that. what it's called because we got it. Well, me and my like a few of my roommates, we got it, and yeah. all of our friends that went here were on it. And like people were like, "Oh, there are seven here, like a seven in bed, like blah, like I don't know." It was just, There's like, like categories. Yeah, it was cracking me up. I don't know about oh. this app, but I'm assuming it's the same thing. I have to check it out. I feel it's, like it'd be. Oh, go oh, ahead. Man. I feel like it'd be gonna catch in uh, like weirdos. I feel like only weirdos would be the ones used this in the first place anyway. <laughs> And I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm like one of those, you know, people all about empowerment. And because people are just so into the social media and like really pay attention to that, I feel like it would really destruct people's personalities. Yeah. yeah. Or th their self esteem, excuse me, you know? Oh, it's it like, definitely will. It's going to yeah. crush people. It will take cyberbullying to a whole new level. <laughs> really? I think dating and like this kind of thing should, we should stop. Yeah. We shouldn't have more things I can see come that. out. Like, mm -hmm. Tinder, I was That's never a enough. fan of Tinder. Tinder scares me. I make me. fun of people yeah. who use Tinder. Sorry if you use Tinder, but I just feel like you should be able to go out in a social setting and just have a conversation. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you like someone, then get their number. And don't go through like a like an app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm totally, and I think it's a little on the dangerous side. Quick question. Yeah, for sure. um, do people actually use Tinder to meet up with people? Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Like, have, have you it's, ever it's met up with someone on Tinder? Really popular uh, here my, at my friend. That is so scary. I could mm -hmm. never, ever do that. My friends had strangers drive to their, like, to their house. And I, I like, want to That is so out. stupid. That is so dangerous. That you hurts my heart. Or, like, you can just, You can like, die. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. So, Lindsay uh, Vorchinovic, I think that's how you say it, speaks about how her and Scott Disick are not dating. I repeat, they are not dating. However, it does seem a bit sketchy. The two were seen partying together until 6 a.m. in New York City, and they also posted a picture of half-naked cuddling fur coats embracing each other's arms. Damn, Lizzie, all I, can, all I gotta say is you're moving fast. At least make him touch your butt and buy you a pizza first before you go on nude and fur coats on his ass. At least that's what I would do. So uh, what do you guys think? I yeah. think this relationship's a joke. A joke. It's a joke and it's embarrassing because, like, he was with a Kardashian. And now, like, no one even knows who this girl is. Like, 18? she's not. Yeah, she's that's 18. Kylie. Yeah. That's your little, like, that's like your sister in law. You what? are dating your youngest sister in law. Kylie is with Tyga. Tyga's 25. Scott's, like, 33. I mean, but still, what, what is she? Just, she just they just 18. are all so out of, like, normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I don't have a word for it. They like, they're just so the out there. Publicity, that's it. Mm -hmm. I think Scott's going through, like, a midlife crisis that he's not even in his midlife yet. <laughs> but His I whole life is a midlife crisis, seriously, honestly. Seriously, he, like, I am, like, I watch Kardashians. Yeah, I will admit. You keep but up with it's a I do keep the up girls. with the Kardashians. So, like, I watch Scott and Courtney's like, relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's a train wreck. It's a been train for a wreck. while. They, they don't sleep in the same bed, which I think is very unhealthy if you're a couple. <laughs> That's crazy. Whoa. And they have three kids. 
and never talked about marriage. It's not, and not saying that you should be married and yeah. have kids, yeah. but you should have at least some sort of stable relationship, and I don't think they have one at all. I didn't even know that they weren't together, but I do think it's funny. It's like, you know, the first thing that was said as we started talking about it, you go, okay, he was with a Kardashian. Like, this is mm -hmm. a joke. Yeah. That sucks. Like, to yeah. have your name, you know what I mean? Anything associated it, with your name. Either it definitely people love does. It, mm -hmm. Or they think it's but hilarious. But they have to know, like, that show, like, gives them, like, a really bad perception. So I don't it, think they care. And they don't care, so. They just care mm -hmm. about whatever. I mean, yeah. Well, ABC is looking to change their name for the first time in 30 years. As of January uh, 2016, ABC, uh, ABC Family will be known as Freeform. They're hoping the name change will attract what they're, be, what they're calling Becomers, which is a young demographic starting from age 14 and have stated that their new target is age 14 to 31, uh, which is interesting because if you want to attract a younger audience, maybe you don't name it you network after the worst kind of jazz there is. What do you think of this new name, Freeform? I don't like it. Mm. It's weird. Uh, it's weird. Make any sense to me? It, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. Make sense. <laughs> after, like, don't. It's maybe, like what? Yeah. Where did you come up with that? Where and did, it, it's, it's not mean? catchy. It's not. It's not ABC's yeah. Right. ABC's catchy. Mm -hmm. ABC Family. It's and it's like knows it. I don't think right. we should really have. Like, yeah. there's no reason to change it. And their demographic, 14 to 34. A 34-year-old is not going to like the same thing as a 14-year-old, so yeah. I don't understand what they're like trying to do with that. I guess they're like PG-13, PG movies, like everyone yeah. everyone can enjoy it. I don't but know. They've, but I, I feel like they've done that like with stuff like Secret Life of the American Teenager. Like th Those shows were really popular. You know what? Mm -hmm. Honestly, a lot of like parents watch that with their child. But yeah. Exactly, but that was like for a lot of the younger people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the way that you capture the attention of a 14 year old through 18 or whatever age is to put on reality TV. So unless ABC yeah. Family is going to have basketball wives, it's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> In my opinion, it's not going to work. Can't Definitely. argue with that. Yeah. I, just, there, I just think there's no reason to change ABC Family's name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so well known. It's like, so yeah. iconic. Yeah. It, no one's exactly. going to know it's what just, Freeform is. Everyone's going to be like, mm-mm. Well, that's all the time we have for them. I'm Classic. I'm Vicky. I'm Cassie. And I'm Maddie. And here's Mary with your weekly advice. Well, I grew up, loved drawing, making movies and painting. Ever since I was nine years old, I wanted to be a comedian. Thought I had it all figured out. I always did really great in school, got really good grades. I was involved in a lot of extracurricular things. And, uh... I thought that I had it all figured out. You know, I always thought I'd make something of myself. And then I decided to drink and drive. Next thing I know, I was off-road going down a hill. And I'm dead. I, th I thought I had everything planned out. I thought I had it all planned out. I never thought that one decision would end my life. And then I decided to drink and drive. Until I decided to drink and drive. Until I decided to drink and drive. Until I decided to drink and drive. I thought I had it all figured out until I decided to drink and drive. Take a look. Dear Mary, so the other night I went on a blind date. In my opinion, it was pretty horrible, but I want your advice of whether I'm being too judgmental and should give him another chance, or if it really was one of the worst experiences of my life. I met him through my sister's boyfriend. They're co-workers, so I figured he was a decent guy, but boy was I wrong. When he first picked me up, he had a five-pound bag of Starburst sitting in the passenger seat waiting for me. Starbursts are my favorite candy, but it really concerned me that he knew that before I even met him. I pray my sister told him, and, and he didn't take several hours creeping through my social media sites in order to find out that information. I mean, I could understand if it was like the 12-pack that you get in line waiting to check out at Target, but a five-pound bag? I was not flattered by his gesture in any way. Actually, I was a little offended. Did he think I could have finished a five pound bag myself? Whatever, anyways. So he took me mini golfing, which was fine. Then he took me to get ice cream, which was also pretty average. At this point, we had spent like an hour and a half together and minimal conversation was exchanged between us. This kid's definition of getting to know each other was playing 21 questions with the same sentence format. What's your favorite endangered species? What's your favorite cat breed? What's your favorite even number between one and 100? He asked me about things that no one should ever care about. So finally, he was on the way to take me home, thank God, and he asked me what my favorite soda was. When I told him it was root beer, he swerved into the grocery store parking lot so hard that I received a mild case of whiplash and nausea. 
He then marched inside and bought me a two liter bottle of root beer. I think he thought it was like romantic or something. I, on the other hand, thought he was doing way too much and it made me a little uncomfortable. So finally, when he dropped me off, I couldn't even shut the car door because my hands were filled with unwanted gifts. The next day he texted me and told me what a, gr what a great time he had and asked me out again. I tried telling my friends about it, but they think I'm being stuck up and that I should accept all the things he's willing to give me, even if it's cavities and a few extra pounds. What do you think I should do? Should I give him another shot? Am I mistaking his kindness for creepiness? Thanks, Taylor. Hey, Taylor. Sounds like this guy's a winner, despite the fact that he's not very good at making conversation. Sounds like that department could definitely be improved, but I mean, maybe he was just nervous around you. It was his first time meeting you, so maybe he didn't really know how to act around you yet. Maybe he's not used to going on dates. Or maybe he got out of a very serious relationship and doesn't quite know how to get himself back on the market. I say what the heck, give him another shot. Who cares if, he has to, if you have to sacrifice another hour and a half of your time? A free meal is a free meal. Plus, if he's so eager to buy you the things that you like, maybe on your next date you should tell him you like puppies and iPhone 6s. Dear Mary, my name is Kayla. My ex-boyfriend is insane and I need to figure out a way to rid him of my life. Not only am I annoyed by his actions, but I honestly receive secondhand embarrassment by them. Okay, so here's some backstory. We broke up two years ago, but he's recently started texting me in an attempt to try to catch up, which basically means he complains about his life and efforts to win me back through sympathy. In his most recent attempt, when he finally realized how uninterested I was in bullshitting conversation with him, he decided to spark the conversation by sending me a picture of his <laughs> This chronic phase of him sending me nude photos of his veiny, lopsided <laughs> has lasted roughly six months. It gets to the point where he will text me, what's up, followed directly by a picture of his <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't even have an introduction, he just gets right down to it and sends me one without warning. One time he texted me a picture while I was in class and the people beside me thought I was looking at porn. I've turned my read receipts on intentionally so that he knows that I see them and have no interest in responding. I've told him politely to please stop before I become violently ill and I've told him that it's the most unappealing thing I have ever seen and that it is in no way causing me pleasure but it's actually just causing me emotional and physical discomfort. I've tried everything to get him to stop but the dude is a lunatic. I need help dealing with this before I become emotionally scarred for eternity. Kayla, first of all, I just want to say how sorry I am for what you're going through. This is absolutely tragic. If there is such thing as cyber raping, you are definitely a victim of it. I'd like to start off by saying that if any guys are tuning in right now, I have some advice for you. No woman wants a picture of your p ever, under any circumstances. There is never a time nor a place for a p picture. Actually, there is. It's never. If you have any ounce of respect for fem females, please, for God's sake, do not unexpectedly blind them with a picture of that thing. Most guys know that their <laughs> along with every other is generally unpleasant, so just don't do it. It's 100% frowned upon and should never even be considered. With that being said, I think the best way to get rid of this chronic <laughs> vendor is to blackmail him. Next time he sends a photo, mass send it. Post it on Twitter through an anonymous account, of course, and watch as his humiliation unfolds. However, if you have morals and a sense of what's right versus wrong, maybe this isn't the direction you should go in. If you don't want to necessarily publicly humiliate him, I would take another route in embarrassing him by sending it to his mother. That's right, call his mother. Or the police. I'm sure they could get him in trouble for child pornography of his own <coughs> That's a thing, right? Either way, Kayla, you need to get him where it hurts. This chronic <coughs> pick sender needs to be stopped immediately before he ruins your life. Who knows how many, many other lives he's scarred because of this? For anyone dealing with unsolicited <coughs> pictures, please call this number, 1-800-AND-NUDE-PICS-FOREVER. That's four with a number four. I repeat, 1-800-AND-NUDE-PICS-FOREVER. There is help out there and people to talk to. You're never alone. Good luck, Kayla. I hope this solved things for you. Well, that's our show. I'm Mary, and thanks for tuning in, everyone.